What's going on guys? Welcome back to the, <coughs> to the video series. So, as you can see, I've been making steady progress. I'm picking up literally right where I left off at the end of the last video. Um, I, uh, the wire wheel is working pretty good, just slinging stuff everywhere, but I found that uh, you just give it a quick wipe down with like a glove, something so it doesn't stick to your hands, it breaks it all free again, and vacuums up just like dust. And uh, I've decided that I'm going to just keep doing it this way because it's almost done, so dry ice would just be a waste of my time to go get it to, at, the, at the moment. Um, and besides anything that's left behind, any like particles and stuff, I'm just going to power wash out because I plan on power washing the car. Obviously before I lay paint, I'm going to just soak the piss out of it in like some purple power, some super clean, something. Just to make it look, or uh, you know, get rid of all the uh, immediate oils and stuff. I'm not going to do crazy fancy paint. I'm just going to do something simple and then clear coat it. Um, but I just want it to look pretty nice. If anything is going to look better than what it does now. I just know that the front half is obviously going to be covered in uh, carpet, so you're not really going to see it. I just want the peace of mind knowing underneath it's relatively clean. But um, Doge has shown up. I don't know what we're doing. Hanging out. Oh, okay. I guess we're hanging out. So. <laughs> Um, I'm a little low on energy. Yesterday I built a strut bar for a subscriber and uh, it went relatively fine. Uh, I'm working on fixturing it. I messed up about the wrong bolts and stuff that I needed today to finish my fixture. But I dehydrated myself pretty good yesterday so I'm just not feeling it today. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It might be productive, might not be. I don't know. Doge would be the judge of that. No big deal either way. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. What are we doing? What did you, you come here for? Oh, so I brought back stuff that you loaned me. <clears throat> I loaned you stuff? So I've got Chris's conversion harness here. It's a little tangled up, but still good. Uh, brought over some of my documents that I'd printed out. I recognize some of these, some of my notes for my harness, and then the paperwork I borrowed from you is in here somewhere. Oh, I did have a few people ask me if you're gonna be making the DA conversion harnesses. So there is people looking forward to it. Yeah, I've, I've seen a couple on the market, and I guess that's kind of my thing is um, I see there's a K-Tune one. Uh, there's a hybrid one that's a little more expensive. Uh, it looks like the trick is that they terminate uh, some of the chassis stuff in wire leads. So it's something I need to look at on, on Chris's car and just kind of see my curiosity is if the, uh, the chassis plug is still available aftermarket or not. So my concern would be, oh, hey, I... I made a conversion harness and I've got a chassis style plug and it doesn't work for you guys when you do finally get it. I'm guessing that's why they terminated some in wire leads and they make you wire it up yourself to some extent. So um, yeah, leave notes in the comments, DA guys. Uh, any any specific things you guys are looking for, if it's a price point that you're trying to beat for the K-Tune stuff. Um, yeah, I, I guess I look at it and I'm like 200 bucks is kind of the run of the mill price for these conversion harnesses. So um, there's probably room for price drops on that so um let me know yeah. what you guys want but also just know that when you buy k-tuned ask any person that has ever done a k-swap how good k-tuned stuff really is yeah because <laughs> i mean it's honestly junk you're getting chinese junk um so take that with a grain of salt but from people who have experience with yeah. doing the k-swaps and i'm in a big group chat full of people with da specifically doing k-swaps every single one of them has touched any k-tune product has thrown it right in the trash and cussed up a storm in the group chat and why is my dog laying you know let's move go go push you over there come here get 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 come here so he just wants to help with the wire <laughs> <laughs> every single time as soon as i do this he's gonna come over here and be like what's up the year on the ground, you can pet me? Yeah, within reach. <laughs> All right, so what's the main thing that you're looking at right now? Uh, just kind of want to take a look at the, the work that AD did, see if I can uh, familiarize myself with this harness, and then figure out uh, what, if any, changes we need to make to the other harness that's going into the chassis. So, point I said, just kind of coming into this fresh, so got to learn. And again, not saying AD did anything wrong at all. We're just trying to redo it and essentially replicate what AD did. But if we can clean it up, because again, I rushed AD when we did it, uh, then just do that. You never rush wiring, man. That's an art form. <laughs> Tristan is still right there. <laughs> but yeah, so in the meantime, I'm going to finish kind of grinding out some of that seam seal stuff. So yeah, we'll set you guys up and uh, get to work.
Well, holy mackerel, Batman. That only took a lot of flinging and a lot of crap everywhere, but it's pretty much as good as I'm going to get it for now, honestly. Um, again, this is all getting coated, and I'm not yeah, not worried about that. I'm more worried about back here, and all the sound deadener and all that's uh, gone out of back here. I just got to give it a good scuff and shoot type thing. Um, so we're going to call that good right there. Yeah. Yeah, not too shabby. So although just still playing with the wires, kind of uh, organizing or whatever. Uh, he needs some stuff welded on. Doing he's doing AC in here. So if you guys kind of remember that part of his swap, then uh, he's doing a Integra condenser. He's got some stuff modified and whatnot. But he needs me to right off the bat really quick weld on some tabs he had cut. So gosh, looks so freaking simple and clean in here. Hot dog. I don't know if you guys remember Doge mentioning he added a fuel pump relay thingy to his fancy little uh, wiring setup he did here, but he doodled a little fuel pump relay fuse location. <laughs> I wish I had a fine point on hand. I don't think I have any fine point silvers. <laughs> We're going all fancy, full size radiator, full size condenser. It's Arizona, man. Full size fuel pump relay. <laughs> <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Full size bench wing on the S2000. Full yes. size splitter. Full size bucket seat. Yeah. Full size everything. This is my excuse not to ever race anymore. Or at all. Why? Because NASA won't let me do it unless I have a harness bar. Trash. That's what I said. Let me choose who I die. That's right. No airbags, you die like a real man. <laughs> no harness bars or safety restraints. We, we uh, submarine like real men. That's right. I'm short. I'm not going very far. <laughs> Just three inches into the <laughs> steering wheel. <laughs> no, it's funny when he... Oh, I was going to point at the ass. It's funny when he gets in his ass because he slides the seat all the way back. I know a lot of people do that with bucket seats and stuff, but he literally slides the seat as far <laughs> forward as he goes. And, like, I'm not a tall person by any means, and me and him are about the same height. Like, uh, he's He's got, like, probably three inches. I think I'm, like, 5'5 five, five on a... 5'6 five, on a good day. Yeah, so I'm like 5'9", 5'10", on a good day, maybe. I don't know. But our legs, are our lower half, are, I think they look to be the same-ish. But yeah, it's like going for, I don't know. It just, it's funny how far forward he has to scoot the chair and stuff. That's the nice thing is like, <laughs> if people worry about messing my seat up in the S, it's like, no, no, don't worry. I got it down to an R. It just goes all the way forward and I barely yeah. get the clutch all the way down. Yeah, no, not with me. Not in, the, not in my S2000. It has to be like three clicks back like just enough lean to be like not solo leaning but not like sitting straight forward and then like the amount forward is very awkward because there's like a certain spot that my arm rests on the window while holding the wheel with like three fingers that i'm comfortable with <laughs> and if it's anywhere further forward or back i just i want to rage quit and i just i don't want to drive <laughs> Do it fit? She fit. Shoo! <laughs> okay, so got the tabs. Condenser sitting in there. We just bent up the top one. He's using like a CRV top support thingy. And so we bent the little flaps on it. So it's good for him to just drill two little holes in his uh, coarse port top and bolt it up. And then he can go hook up the lines. Oh, we gotta modify the one line, don't we? Yeah, yeah, that'll be the last thing. There's one line, there's a walkthrough that's on K20A, I think, um, that gives a pretty good example of how to reuse your stock lines for this to save some money. Um, but yeah, there's one line that has the low pressure service port on it, um, and that one just gets shortened down to like a little four or five inch section. This is scaring me. Yeah, the zoom is a little too much. <laughs> a little <intense. laughs> uh, Morning after, last night I just coarse pork, uh, a bit of a condenser, all that's good. So today I'm just on my way to get coffee really quick, per usual. Um, speaking of coffee, we got a new merch design coming out, a new merch and sticker design um, that is ready. Now I just gotta find some time to put it on stuff. Um, but also, 
Yeah, so I had some guy drop a car off last night for some work. And then I also saw this morning when I woke up that uh, Bravis uh, Debbie Garage, his car got jacked, I guess, his Civic. Not, not khaki, but his EK. So thankfully he already found it. Um, it. It only made it a couple miles up the road, it sounds like. But still, that's wild. I feel so bad for him or anybody that falls victim to that. Um, but yeah, so coffee, and then get back to the house, get some of this mechanical work done. We're just doing some valves, uh, valve adjustment on this Integra, but I'll show you guys when we get back to the house. Package secured. I do feel nice having the windows tinted now because now I can vlog in my car without feeling super awkward because people are, I feel like people are all eyes on me. Well, anyway, back to work. So this one's no race car. It is just a good little daily driver. It's an automatic, I think LS. Uh, it's got a B20 swap in it just because, and it, um, yeah, the guy basically just bought it for a daily. And uh, he's going on a little road trip in here soon. And he just wanted to make sure everything was good. There's a little bit of a ticky noise, so he suspects valves. So he asked me to do a valve adjustment. So that's what we're gonna be doing. Um, and then, you know, obviously he's gonna go through, change a bunch of the fluids and all this other jazz, but for the task at hand it is just the valve lash i will once over everything while i'm in there um give everything a quick look over and uh, make sure he's all good but yeah nothing too crazy not too shabby if i can find the hood release nothing too shabby he's already done a bit of maintenance uh has ac and power steering uh yeah so let's get to it I apologize for the shadowing, nothing I can really do about that at the moment, but I'm going to just do a quick visual inspection on everything just to let the guy know because this is going to be a long road trip. He's taking it to Wisconsin, I think he said. So um, yeah, brakes look new, pads look like they have basically all the life left. Uh, this tie rod is questionable, like that boot's very, very dried out, it looks a little cracked. Um, same thing with the upper control arm, that looks pretty darn worn. So I personally would replace those, they're cheap. Get the car aligned before you go, obviously peace of mind. Give the wheel bearing a check, tie rods. Okay, this feels very tight, that's good. I'll do the same check on the other side, but also this upper control arm, the ball joint looks pretty well dry and cracked. Like, the boot looks very, very dry, so I'm assuming most of the grease is probably dried up in there. So I'll, uh, I'll make note of it, let them know. Um, something to look out for. But otherwise, yeah, let's just kind of uh, get into the valves. If you've never done a valve lash adjustment before, uh, the reason I have the car jacked up is mostly for ease of access to the crank pulley bolt, which is on this side, just in the way with the tire on. Um, so you have to set the car to top dead cylinder, or top dead center at each cylinder, I'm sorry. So you wanna go in the firing order as well, so in this case it would be one, three, four, two. Um, and you just, you know, get your clearances. This is a B20, so I'll have to look up the specs. I forget, they're really close to the OEM like B18 ones, I think all the B series ones are pretty much right in the same area. Um, plus or minus, so 17, 19, yeah. So it's basically uh, 8 thousandths, 10 thousandths, uh, 8 and 10, so right around there. But I'm gonna double check that really quick, grab my feeler gauges, and then, uh, yeah, it's pretty simple. Looking at the specs now, I'm finding on a few different forum pages 004 to 006 for intake, 006 to 008 for exhaust. Check it out how clean it is in this cylinder head. That's nice, you could basically eat off of that. So I don't know, the car was already swapped when he bought it, he just did the bolt ons and taking care of some of the maintenance stuff, but yeah, this thing looks nice. Hopefully, it'll last him a good while. I don't see any scarring or anything crazy on any of the cam lobes. Like everything just looks really, really clean. So it looks like it was well maintained in its life. Timing belt still looks nice and healthy. I don't see any stress cracking. I don't see any dry spots. So, yeah, good on him.
got the valve lash set everything should be good some of them like two or three of them were fine and then the rest of them were either super tight or super loose something i noticed so while i was doing it is this is at top dead center on cylinder one right now and you can see that's a lot of slack on that belt so i'm going to text the guy really quick um judging by the condition of the belt it looks like they may have swapped it when whoever installed this engine put the engine in so i'm assuming maybe they just didn't set the belt tension correctly so i'm going to text him really quick see if that's something he wants me to do and then um yeah, we'll go from there, I suppose. Okay, just got a hold of the guy. He approved the labor, uh, approved the job. He, again, doing a road trip, doesn't want it to jump time or anything. So this just turned into a couple hour job. Now I've got to take the power steering stuff off, uh, take the AC belt off, take the alternator belt off, get the crank pulley off, get the timing covers off, and then we can get access to everything in there. And then, uh, yeah, just set the double check the timing it is at top dead center right now so should be able to just take it all apart really quick jump it three teeth forward crank that tension down and we should be good to go from there and then we can fire it up so again sorry hate to do it to you but time lapse i gotta i got work to do got everything torn apart where i need to now i can access what i need to access which would be the timing components so see that up there Basically, I don't know how focused that is. Let me, let me focus you in a little bit better. There we go. Um, so basically, all I got to do now is throw the crank bolt back in right here, snug it down a little bit, and then I can turn this all by hand, and we're going to turn it three teeth counterclockwise, and then that should put the tension that we need back on this belt, and then we can snug it right back up and just reassemble. Okay, so I know this is a terrible angle, but my tripod is just like in the way, so I have a set in the camera here. I'm gonna tension this, and then you guys should be able to see this belt kind of suck up a little bit, and then we're gonna crank down that uh, tensioner, and that should be good. Okay, you see how it's nice and tight right there? Now I'm gonna go ahead and tighten down the tensioner and we should be able to turn it by hand a few times to make sure it keeps that tension, and if so, then it's good. Okay, so we're gonna spin the motor by hand, um, like three, four rotations, and double check our tension. Now I do have the spark plugs out of this so it cranks really easy, so I don't break the uh, crank bolt back out. So there's one, two, okay, and three. Yeah, and I didn't see the belt jump up anymore, so I'd say we're good. So I'm gonna go ahead, put this back together, and uh, wrap it up. Just popping in here to say get some merch. Okay, let's, oh, don't crush my leg. Ooh. Okay, let's uh, fire this up quick. Uh, let's go into park. Okay, we're good. So let's do it. She sounds smooth. Sweet, that was a success. Well, it seems like it's gonna take a couple days uh, with Doge to get the wiring sorted out. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up here. Um, so in the next video, I'm probably gonna either be doing the carpets, like dyeing it or something like that. Um, Cause uh, yeah, other than that, it's just get the wiring sorted out, which again, is gonna take a few days to figure everything out, map it out. And then the interior, I'm just gonna give it a scuff and shoot, but I'm gonna wait for uh, a bunch of other stuff to get done first. I gotta start prototyping harness bars. I gotta 
Um, I'm gonna build the roll bar first, so the paint won't be for a couple weeks yet, I don't think. Um, just depends on how long everything else takes me. But this integra is good, so this thing's ready to go home really quick. Or uh, so this thing's ready to go home. Um, probably gonna spin around the block really quick, make sure it's double sit or like all good to go. It's not making any weird noise or nothing. I, I gave the engine bay a nice rinse out, um, kind of just be nice, get all the grease and crap from where I was working and what was in there before. Um, anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to let me know in the comments down below. If you have any suggestions for what you'd like me to do with the Integra while I'm in here, uh, let me know in the comments down below as well. I'm open to suggestions. Uh, if you want to help support the channel, I do have merch in the Big Cartel. I also have a few bumper bars left if you'd like to order one. Uh, get at me at Sadowski Fabrication or Chris Sadowski on Instagram. And if you're interested at all in the camera equipment I use, the welders I use, or anything like that, any of my power tools and stuff, I do have Amazon affiliate links in the description if you want to get some for yourself. Uh, please use those links. Anyways, guys, I'm going to go get some lunch, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. So do what you love, feedback the rest, and keep killing it. Peace.